Hey everyone, it's that time of the week again. Time for another Geek and Dorks review. And uh, I looked at what's playing in the theaters and I really didn't see anything that grabbed my attention. Um, I think a lot of the movie companies are kind of making way for the warpath that will be Star Wars Episode 7 starting on Friday. Um, but I did want to get a review out to you guys, so I decided I would look for something that fans of Brain Scratch might appreciate. I found a list on IMDb of their top mystery documentaries and took a pick from there. So, in spot number seven is the documentary Cropsy. This was released in 2009, and you can find it um, on Hulu and Netflix right now. So if you subscribe to either of those, you can check this out for free for yourself. Um, in particular, like I said, I picked it for people that like Brain Scratch. It's a real good way to look at a, a bit of a mystery um, that definitely has a resolution, so at least you won't be left hanging, you know, wondering uh, what happened at the end of it. Um, but it really delves into this story about Staten Island, about a mental health hospital out there, and all of a sudden a string of children disappearing. Um, the term cropsy apparently refers to, it's just a generalized slang term for a maniac. And a lot of kids that grew up in that area note that their parents would tell them stories about cropsy to get them to not go to a particular place or you know stay away from the river because that's where Cropsy lives and he'll take you. Um, and I'm not sure if the urban legend of Cropsy started before children actually started disappearing. Um, the, the documentary isn't super clear on that, but it's a really good piece of history. You get to see a lot of old footage. You get to know a bit about Staten Island, about how that came into its existence, what it was before it was populated by people. Um, there's a lot of great old television footage. It's almost like a neat time capsule. And in terms of people that are fans of Brain Scratch, it also takes you through the arc of these investigators. It's almost like watching a Brain Scratch kind of from my point of view. Um, as they're trying to uncover all this information and they're getting other information and they can't tell what's facts, what are just stories, um, which kind of feels like after I post a Brain Scratch and then I start getting a lot of feedback and it's hard to wade through it all and understand, you know, which, which points you can validate easily. Um, as a matter of fact, this one even takes a turn towards Satanism, which of course comes up uh, frequently as a, um, as a topic around a lot of Brain Scratch episodes. So it's a, it's a really well done documentary. Um, I think that for me personally, they could have had some questions running through it. Um, it's, it's a very frank documentary, let me put it that way. The filmmakers appear to have their own belief and decision about Cropsy um, and about the court cases and how all that goes. And they don't really vary from their point of view very much, which is definitely a bit different than a brain scratch. Um, but this is a case where um, they found someone and he has been convicted at least of one kidnapping charge and you get to go through the experience of a second charge being brought up against him to um, hopefully keep him in jail. Uh, and also the frustration that the filmmakers have in terms of communicating with him, trying to interview him. And, um, very, very cool. I really enjoyed it. Um, like I said, available on free platforms, so you can check it out. Uh, if you don't have one of those two platforms, you can also rent it, I believe, on Amazon for just a couple bucks and check it out. And if you're a fan of Brain Scratch, I highly recommend it. Um, the main filmmaker in it has made another one called Killer Legends, which I will probably check out and do a review for you of soon. And in terms of rating, right now on IMDb, it looks like it is rated a 6.4 out of 10, and I have to agree with that. I think that as a documentary, as a time capsule of Staten Island, it does pretty well. Um, looking into the psyche of people affected by tragedy, it does fairly well. Uh, it just could have had, I think, a little more room for the audience to make their own interpretations which is kind of strange because there's a line right at the end of the movie where they're, they're kind of stating that, that you know, it's really up to, to, to people to believe whatever they want about this case. But the documentary really is not shot that way. It's given with a very strong point of view of 
they know who Cropsey is, and he definitely is the guy. Um, so, in any case, yeah, I'd say I give it a six out of ten. But I think it's definitely worth a look and worth your time, particularly if you're a fan of those types of mysteries. And I hope uh, you'll check it out. Hope you all are having a great holiday season. Um, and I will be back at the end of the week with a brain scratch where we're going to discuss the Elisa Lamb case. There was a big twist this week. There was a court date um, about this case, and I was there, so I will be sharing all that information with you on Friday about what I saw and how that all went. Um, take care, everyone. I will catch you next time on the Geek Dorks channel.